Hello everyone and welcome to yet another sorting session. How about that? I bet you didn't expect that shit to happen. So yesterday I did a stream where I developed a white noise uh, generator in C. Uh, I'm gonna put the source code uh, of that generator in the description. So let me uh, just quickly do that. Uh, white uh, noise generator in C. The recording of that stream is not on the YouTube yet. I'm in the middle of preparing it. And I was thinking what I'm going to put in the thumbnail of that video. And I think the most logical thing to put in a thumbnail would be the like static white noise, like a TV style static white noise, like black and white grainy thingy. And the easiest way to obtain such an image would be to generate it in, you know, programmatically. So, and I was thinking what uh, kind of language I can use for, uh, for, for this task. And and I realized that the language I've been developing for the path past two months is actually mature enough for uh, for this task to solve. So, and uh, the language is called Porth. Uh, you can find um, the source code of this language in here if you're interested. So, uh, source. Uh, source code of Porth, right? So here it is. You can find it in here. And it's a stack based uh, concatenative programming language. If you never heard about stack based concatenative programming languages, I really recommend to check out Forth, right? So in fact, it was heavily inspired by Forth, right? So in the name even come from Forth. It's like Forth, but written in Python. The original implementation of Porth is written in Python, but we are in the middle of rewriting it in itself, right? So uh, uh, in the source code, we have two files, porth.porth, the original implementation of porth in Python, and porth.porth, the uh, rewrite of porth in itself. So uh, porth.porth doesn't have all of the features of porth.py, but it already can compile itself. So it's already self-hosted. Uh, so, but it's lacking a few very important features. Primarily, it's a static type checking, right? So uh, porth.py actually statically typed, and it can actually check that the operations that you apply to the elements on the stack are like match the um, corresponding types. Uh, so porth.py cannot do that. So, and I think this language is already mature enough to implement, uh, you know, a program that just generates the thumbnail with a static white noise. So, and let's go ahead and do that. And let's see how easy or difficult it is to do that in such a language. I'm going to be using the Python version of Porth because it has a static type checking. It's kind of difficult for me to develop without it uh, because it's very convenient. It catches a lot of errors and uh, that's what's important for me I, because I make a lot of errors, right? So when you make a lot of errors, it's pretty important to have a language that catches a lot of errors uh, at compile time. Uh, all right, so let's actually create a thumbnail program, right? So, and quickly implement, I don't know, hello world, just to check how things go. Um, right, so hello world, and I'm gonna do puts, and let's go ahead and try to compile this program, uh, right, thumbnail.port. And uh, our language uh, works the following way. The compiler generates the assembly file. Then we feed that assembly file into the assembly, into NASM. And then NASM generates an object file that we feed into the GNU linker. And GNU linker generates the final executable. And then uh, the compiler runs that executable. And here it is. Here it says hello world without a proper new line. Uh, there we go. So now it says hello world. Right. So this is a very simple language. I would say it's uh, like on the level of C. It's basically as low level as C, maybe even like lower than C. So and the question is, how would you generate an image using such a language? And I think the answer is PPM. Uh, if you never heard of, uh, about PPM, I really recommend to look into that uh, image format because it's extremely simple. It is in fact so simple that you don't need any library to read and write uh, this image format, PPM image format. Right. So essentially it consists of like a text metadata and the raw data. It's a raw format. Because it's a raw format, the final images are usually quite big, right? Because they're not compressed. But that's the price that you pay for the simplicity of the format. So this format is not uh, really suitable for transferring images over the network or for storing them on the hard drive. So it's more suitable for like debugging purposes, right? So you want to debug um, some something very 
very quick and you just like dump some image data on the into that format and then you inspect it and see where is the bug especially if you have some sort of like a uh, you know, graphical algorithm, right? It's pretty convenient for that when you're generating textures or something like that for OpenGL and whatnot. So, and um, yeah, let's go ahead and use that format. So um, let's try to generate real quick uh, a simple image in that format. So to do that, we need to open a file. So we're going to use the um, open at syscall open at syscall so it accepts four uh, arguments and since our language is a concatenative language we'll have to provide those arguments instead of like a reversed order right so here is the syscall right and first comes the mode so we'll have to provide the mode then we'll have to provide the flags uh, then we'll have to provide the path name right i think i can provide the path name right away so let's actually call it something like thumbnail uh, ppm right and since this is a syscall it accepts an ultimated string so in our language to uh, say that you want to have an ultimated string you have to put c because by default our uh, strings in this language are not null terminated they're actually size strings uh, right and then we have to provide dear fd dear fd is basically a relative directory i don't quite remember what it is actually dear fd uh so let me see let me see if path name is relative and dear fd is a special value at fd uh then the path name is to put a relative to the current working directory uh, of the of the clone process so essentially you can open i think you can open a directory right and you can supply that file descriptor of the directory in that syscall and uh, basically all of the paths are going to be interpreted as relative to that specific directory i think that's how it works but if you want to basically go off of the current working directory you have to use this special value right and as far as i know we do have that special value in our standard library so we're going to put it like this so uh the only thing we don't have in here is the mode and the flags and after that you just call open uh open at and this entire operation returns the file descriptor that we have to check uh right so i kind of prefer to store the file descriptor somewhere so i'm going to allocate a little bit of memory for the file descriptor so size of u64 right so right away after we open this entire thing i'm gonna uh basically save uh the descriptor into here so after that i think we want to check whether it was a successful call or not all right so i'm going to take fd i'm going to read the value out of it and if it's negative uh, that means we couldn't open that file right so we're going to put something like this error could not um could not open file um so thumbnail ppm thumbnail ppm i want to actually sort of extract that thing somewhere oh boy uh oh boy oh boy oh boy so it would be kind of cool if we had something like this memory uh file path and uh this is going to be a pointer right size of ptr uh and this is where i would just take this entire thing and save it into the file path right so it's going to be something like this so now file path uh, stores this stuff uh, and then i can just put it like this uh, there we go so i'm essentially pushing the pointer to this variable onto the stack and then i'm reading it and uh, it just gives me the uh, the actual c strings in here so then we can say could not open file uh, this right so this is going to be inputs then i take file path i read it right so it will give me a c string but we can't print c string so the first thing we have to do we have to convert c string to our regular string uh, CSTR to str and then we'll be able to print it uh, so i think i can even do something like this i can align everything and then we're going to finish the message could not open file and i think that's it right so we couldn't open this file and then we're going to exit with no zero exit code uh, so cool and after that we can just do something like okay right to indicate that everything went okay um, all right so the only thing we need to figure out in here is what kind of mode uh, where we have to use the mode is basically the permissions of the created file right uh, i already figured out what kind of permissions you want to use in ports.port right uh, because it opens a file to generate an assembly file so and because of that we do open at 
and we're using for 20 mode <laughs> right so we're using for 20 mode so the reason why i'm using for 20 mode is because if you convert it to octal right um so oc octal for 20 uh there we go it's basically 644 uh it's a 644 permission so and uh, yeah so that's what we're using here so what kind of flags are we going to use um I think we're going to use the same flags, right? So we're going to use o create, which will create the file if it doesn't exist, right? So then we're going to use write only because we don't need to read from that file. And then we're going to use truncate, which will truncate the file if it already exists, right? So it basically, if the file already exists and it has something in it, it will basically remove everything and start from scratch. Uh, so that's precisely what we want to do. We want to override the file. All right, so there we go. Uh, so this is a simple program that basically uh, opens a file. So maybe at the end of the program, we want to close the file. So I'm going to do something like uh, FD, FD, read it, uh, and then I'm going to close it. I don't remember if close returns any exit code, but the compiler will tell me. Um, all right, so what do we have in here? Oh, OK, so the order isn't correct, so yeah. Mm, we haven't handled data and I don't care about that data. There we go. So it said OK. So it managed to create the file. That means we should have an empty thumbnail PPM file in here. There we go. So we have a uh, thumbnail PPM and it is in fact empty. So I'm thinking, can I actually create a situation when it won't be able to open such file? For instance, if the file is a directory, uh, thumbnail uh, PPM, so now this thing is a directory because I want to see how it will generate an error. There we go. So it said it couldn't open the file and apparently I forgot the new line in the error message. Right. So there we go. So it couldn't open that file. It doesn't really explain why, uh, because we don't really have a convenient way to just inspect the error codes from the syscalls, but we're working on that. Eventually we're going to have all of that, all of that goodness, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. All right. So let me remove that thing. Let me remove that thing and I'm going to restart the program. And as you can see, it created it. It keeps creating the empty file. So uh, after we created an empty file, we can try to put something in there, right? So uh, as far as I know, uh, PPM format uh, consists of different formats. There is at least like six different formats, uh, three plain text formats and uh, three binary row formats. We're going to use a binary row because it's going to be the most concise one, even though this is a raw format and it's going to be huge anyway, uh, the binary one is going to be the most concise one. So if I remember correctly, for the P6 format, first thing you have to put into the file is uh, P6, right? <laughs> Believe it or not, you have to put P6. So let's do uh, FD64 and then we're going to do F puts, right? So we're essentially printing this string into the um, into the into the file so the next thing we need to do we need to supply the width and height of the image right so what's going to be width and height i don't know so let's define it somewhere uh somewhere up here so it's going to be a bunch of constants uh width is going to be 512 and uh height is going to be also 512 so we're just experimenting with the format we're not generating the file thumbnail um all right so the next thing i'm going to do in here i'm going to take the width and i'm going to uh, put the file descriptor, right? So here's the file descriptor. And then I'm going to do F put U, which will essentially take the number on the stack and print it as a string in here. Uh, then we'll have to put some spaces in here, right? So uh, let me do it like that. So here is the space. And then uh, we'll have to put the height, right? So we'll have to put the height. And I don't quite remember, like, I think uh, you'd have to also specify another number. Is there any examples of P6? I want to see an example of P6, but I don't quite remember. Uh, I think you have to do also 255 um, of some sort. So this is going to be the height. And then uh, in here, I can just do something like space 255 new line. Uh, all right. And what I'm thinking is that can I just split this entire stuff for the for the convenience? Uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to have in here. And then I can basically align everything by FD and it looks more or less nice, right? More or less. 
Um, okay, so this is basically the metadata of the language, right? So P6, width height, and 255. I don't really remember what 255 means, but it's some sort of like a, you know, the size of the component, I think. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Who knows? Anyway, so let's try to uh, rerun this program. And let's take a look at the final uh, file in here. So it has uh, 15 bytes in it. And if we take a look at this thing, it's uh, P6, uh, 512, 512, 255. Okay, that's cool. So after that, we have to provide the binary data. So the way we provide the binary data, each pixel is three bytes. Right, each pixel is three bytes, and each byte is the component of the color red, green, and blue. And uh, basically, uh, how many bytes you have to uh, provide? You have to provide width uh, multiplied by height multiplied by three bytes, right? So uh, basically, linearly. Um, and that's the entire format, believe it or not. That's the entirety of a format. That's why it's so good for like quick prototyping and also debugging. So let's try to generate an image of like a solid color, right? And see how it goes. So what kind of color we're gonna use? I think we're gonna use the red color because it's a color of the communism, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah, this joke is dumb. All right, so um, I think I need to allocate a buffer for three bytes. So I'm gonna do memory, pixel, and we're gonna have three bytes in here, right? There we go. Might as well even like save, like predefine that pixel, right? I can take the first pixel in here and set it to 155, uh, right? And there we go. And the rest of the pixels are gonna be zero, right? When you define a global memory in a global scope, it's automatically initialized with zero because it's stored in the BSS section, right? So you basically get uh, zero initialization for free. So in the next thing we wanna do, we probably wanna organize the loop that iterates width by height amount of times and just uh, basically spams that pixel into the file. I guess that's what we want to do. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to put zero onto the stack. I'm going to start the while loop. Uh, I'm going to duplicate the zero on the stack and then I'm going to put on the stack width and multiply it by height. So we have the current index and width multiplied by height on the stack. And then we check a condition, whether the current index is less than the amount of pixels that we have to write. And then we check that condition to know where we have to break off the loop or not, right? And at the end of the loop, we have to increment the index. So inside of the loop in here, we have the index. Uh, that we don't care about actually for, for the purpose of generating a solid color, so we can just ignore it. Um, so, and in here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put three onto the stack, indicating the, um, uh, the size of the buffer that we wanna write into the file. Then we're gonna put pointer to the buffer, right? So three and then pixel. And then we have to provide the file descriptor. So here is the file descriptor. And then I say, please print those uh, three bytes into the into the file, right? As far as I know, this thing is not going to compile because we'll have to drop the index, right? So we'll have to drop the index after we used it. So I'm gonna put a drop in here and there we go. So I think it in fact worked and it generated a file of the size of se uh, 769 nice uh, kilobytes, right? So it generated something. So if we look into this thing, uh, and it should be a red square. So we just generated um, like a solid image 512 by 512, uh, and that was pretty easy. So in fact, you can generate different colors. I would say. Uh, let me see. So it could, not, it may not necessarily have to be like a red. It could be green. But for the green, we have to ship that pixel like by one, uh, right? And if I just refresh everything and open this thing yet again, it's gonna be green. So if I shift this pixel by two, it will be blue. There we go. It's pretty cool. So we can generate different colors. Isn't that pog? Isn't that pog? I think it's pretty fucking pogue. Uh, so now we need to generate uh, like a random noise. So how can we generate a random noise? I think for each pixel, um, we have to generate a random number from zero to 255, right? Because I want to uh, keep it in the shades of gray. So for that, we'll need a random number generator. And in fact, uh, I do have a random number generator in the standard library. I recently implemented it off screen. 
Um, so let me see. So I basically used LCG um, and I used the one that is used by MMX by Donald Knuth in his like M -M 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 MMX, it's not MMX, MMX. Uh, it's his like fictional, I think it's his fictional uh, computer for his series of the art of computer programming. Um, and in his book, I think he uses these parameters for the LCG. So I decided I'm going to use them as well. Uh, since MM, uh, MMX, um, I don't know how to pronounce the name of this thing, thinks this computer is 64-bit and port is also 64-bit uh, language. So I think it kind of suits to that. Anyways, so let's see if this uh, random number generator actually works. So first thing we want to do, we probably want to seed it, right? So we're going to uh, provide some sort of a seed. Uh, let's use 69. I don't know, just a you know, random number. And uh, I suppose for each pixel, uh, right, let's generate a random number, right? So we're going to do rand. Uh, and after that, I have to take uh, first like eight bytes of the random number. And I think the easiest way for me to do that is to just do 255 and do bitwise end. And that way I get an, a number from 0 to 255, I think. Yes, I do. Um, okay, so then I need to put that number in all of the three components of the pixel, right? So I don't have to set this pixel in here, but I have to use it for all of the pixels. So the question is how we're going to do that. Um, I don't know. I can duplicate this thing, right? So that, that means now I have uh, three, um, two numbers in here. I can duplicate it one, uh, one more time. So now I have uh, three uh, instances of that random number and I can just do something like pixel um, 8 so that consumes that one then pixel 1 plus 1 plus 8 that consumes that one and then I can do pixel 2 plus 8 that consumes the the last one um, all right so I guess that's how we can do that uh, and after that, I can just write that pixel into the file, right? So, and let's see if it's going to generate anything. Uh, let's take a look. And it's actually kind of weird because it's like linear for whatever fucking reason. Uh, so it looks like a barcode. <laughs> so <laughs> why is it like that? Is that because of the random number generator? Or is that because I did a fucky wacky oopsie doopsie uvu? I'm, I'm not even sure if I did a, like any fucky wacky oopsie doopsie anywhere. I didn't think so, at least. Mm, so that's kind of weird, isn't it? That's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. Hmm. Where could we have a mistake? So if I change the... Okay, so let's assume that maybe something aligned like incorrectly so that means if i change the width to 511 it should be offset right it should be offset it is in fact offset so is that because of some sort of a flaw within the random number generator it could be the case actually maybe the random number generator is kind of bad uh right so i just stole that random number generator from the wikipedia page so i don't really know what i'm talking about so uh, I don't think I don't think it's a good random number generator. Not gonna lie. Um, okay. So let me see. Yeah, it is kind of weird. Uh, so it doesn't look very random at all. Mm, so what if I if, what if I change it to something like I don't know, like a um, prime number, right? So is there like a prime number that is close to five hundred and twelve prime number? Uh, prime numbers. Uh, so let me see. Let me take a look at some of the prime numbers in here. Uh, prime number. Prime numbers. Prime numbers. So 512. Uh, so I guess I can use 563. Right. 563. Uh, all right. So I'm going to just regenerate everything. And if I take a look at this thing, yeah. So it is definitely something with a random number generator. It is definitely something with a random number generator. Um, so I don't even know what we can do about that. All right. I need to think. So we probably could use like a different random number generator. 
Mm, but maybe it doesn't really matter uh, if we try to scale up the pixels because that's one of the things I wanted to do. Mm, one of the things I wanted to do, I wanted to actually make them a little bit bigger because if they're going to be like pixel sized, the entire thumbnail is not going to make much sense, I think. So um, I think it would be better to actually make it uh, like a little bit bigger. Uh, though we can also try to make it, uh, you know, the size of like full HD, one, uh, one, 1980. Um, um, I forgot. I think I think it, yeah this is uh, this is the actual thing here. Uh, okay so it will take a little bit of time to generate oh my god yeah so I'm doing a very poor job uh, generating this thumbnail right so it would be better to actually store the entirety of the thumbnail in the memory first and just write it into a file with a single write that way it would be a little bit faster right now we're just making a write call on each on each pixel which is rather slow because you constantly switch the context between the user application and the kernel but anyway we can optimize that a little bit later so we need a better uh, random number generator that's what we need right now better random number generator so i wonder if we can find one um, mm, 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 mm. so i wonder if we can find one uh so maybe we could maybe sum up some of the like all of the bits of the of this thing or do something Mm, 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 mm. All right, so let's make a small break, and after the break, I will try to figure out what we can do with the random number generator. Um, all right, so here is an interesting thing uh, that I found about LCGs. Uh, they're called LCGs. Yes, they're called LCGs. Um, so they generate like a relatively random data. Well, let's actually try to generate some data using uh, this LCG. Um, let me see. So it would be nice to maybe um, wrap everything in here into some sort of like a main file, a main function, I mean, uh, proc main, uh, like so. Uh, two, 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 two. And then they're going to be a main. So then later I can just disable it and uh, can try to do different things. For instance, I can play with the random number generator. So I'm going to have 69. And if you try to generate like 10 uh, numbers in here, right? Dupe, 10 less, do, and uh, one plus. There we go. Mm. So let's actually print all of that, like print 10 uh, random numbers. Uh, so it has an int in here, so I suppose if I go to actually drop that int. And they look relatively random, right? So they're big and relatively random. But if you cut them, like, for instance, if you take a modulo of two, right? So we can do one and end. Uh, so they don't really look that random anymore, right? So if you want like a random, um, you know, even odd numbers, and you're gonna use this random number generator, like you're not gonna get like a random sequence. So, and uh, like I encountered that weird problem several times when I was trying to implement LCGs from Wikipedia. So I don't know. Uh, again, I know nothing about random number generation, so I uh, might be actually doing it horribly wrong. Uh, but I just copy pasted whatever I found on Wikipedia, which is pretty educational, I suppose. Right. So maybe Wikipedia is not a reliable source of information, but if you try to use that information and you uh, discover something wrong, that's a pretty good educational moment, I think. Uh, like right now, uh, maybe whatever I'm using from Wikipedia is not particularly correct, but this is basically what I'm using here, right? So, um, and I think that's the formula from, from the Wikipedia. We can even, even check it out. So in any case, so the overall, the big numbers, they do look random. But when you try to cut off some beats, um, so they tend to repeat a lot. So what I'm thinking is that maybe we should not, you know, remove dot, uh, those numbers uh, like at all and do some interesting trick. What if we take the bytes of the randomly generated number and sum them up uh, and then only then take the like uh, eight bits of the uh, of the number, right? So that way we sort of like 
trying to take into account all of the bytes of the randomly generated number and maybe that's going to be a little bit more random if that makes any sense so um yeah let me try let me try to see uh, if we can do that so uh, let me let me see what if we had a procedure right Mm, that basically sums up all of the eight bytes of the 64-bit numbers. Uh, basically, some bytes, right? It will accept an integer and it will return an integer. And essentially what it will do, right? So it has that integer on the stack, right? It has that integer on the stack. Uh, so, and let's put an index on the stack as well, right? So it's going to be zero while dupe um and we need to do that eight times so there we go one plus uh all right so the next thing we need to have we need to have a sum i think for the sum i can actually allocate the memory on the stack um so memory uh result size of uh integer and and i'm gonna just uh, assign zero to that thing right so it's gonna be something like int there we go. So after that, I want to swap uh, integer. Do I want to swap the integer? I think I do. Or maybe not. Mm. It actually depends. It actually depends. So let's actually go ahead and swap it. Maybe uh, maybe it will be fine. So the next thing I want to do, um, I want to duplicate it. If I'm going to be duplicating it, I might as well actually just do over, right? Over simply will copy integer in here, All right? Uh, then I want to cut one byte out of it, so I'm going to do 255 and uh, end, right? So here I got uh, something like this. So this is a single byte from that number. And then I want to add it to the result, right? So I'm going to push the result onto the stack. Then I'm going to read the value uh, of, the, of the result, right? So here we go, we read the value. Then we're going to sum it up. Uh, right, and we want to save it back into the result. There we go. Cool. Uh, so after that, uh, I want to basically decrease, remove the byte from this uh, integer. So to do that, I'll need to swap it, right? So I'm swapping it. Then I need to shift it by, um, by a single byte. So I need to do eight shift uh, I suppose right, right, shift right, so I'm um, shifting it by a single byte. And then I need to swap it back, right, um, so I'm basically swapping it back, and then here I'm incrementing the index, and there we go. So we summed up some bytes. Um, so after that I need to just do drop, um, I'm dropping the index, and then this integer, it's basically zero, right, we don't need it anymore, so we probably have to do something like two drop. Um, after that, I can just read the result and return it for uh, for the color of that function. Um, okay, so here uh, we're gonna have random numbers, right? So here are some random numbers, and we can try to sum the bytes of those random numbers, and they're a little bit smaller, um, but hopefully they are less repetitive, especially in terms of like. Um, to be fair, I it doesn't. Well, I, I think it's all right. Uh, it's hard to tell if they're less repetitive or not. So what if we generate like 100 of them? Um, how repetitive are they? So uh, a little bit repetitive, but I mean, not that much. So if we take like um, one single byte out of it, is it going to be like too much different? Uh, it is less periodic. Yeah, so now it is definitely less periodic. You can clearly see that. So if you don't sum up those bytes, right, if you don't sum up these bytes, uh, it is straight up periodic for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know, maybe I implemented this thing incorrectly from Wikipedia. Uh, but if you sum it up, it's uh, less periodic now, which is... I, can, I can't even see the period. Maybe there is some sort of a period in here, like... Uh, but it's hard to tell. So, because when we sum up the numbers, we're kind of taking into account all of them, right? We're not throwing away any information, hopefully. So, and uh, let me see, what if I take like um, 250, like basically eight, um, eight bytes from here. So, do they look random? More or less, they do look random more or less. 
So uh, let's go ahead and try to apply uh, this thing for our, uh, you know, for our application. So here we take a random, right, so this is going to be a random, then we sum the bytes, right, then we sum the bytes, and only then we take uh, the first byte out of it. So I suppose we'll have to take this sum bytes thing and put it over the main, because otherwise it's not going to be visible. It's a single pass compiler, don't judge me. Uh, it's not going to be single pass um, in the future, right, we're going to have, we're going to implement multiple passes, so you don't have to specify the procedures in specific order. Uh, all right, so let's take a look if that fixed anything. So it is generating something and uh, there we go. So now that looks like a random static noise and uh, it probably ruins like the entire encoding right now. So I really apologize for that. So, okay, we kind of fixed the random number generator. Um, so let's actually zoom in. Um, it does in fact look pretty random. It does in fact look pretty random. Okay, so, but it's too fine-grained, I would say. One of the things I would like to do is to maybe increase the size of each individual, um, of each individual pixel, so they're more visible. Uh, and I need to think how to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. By the way, if you know what's wrong with my random number generator, please let me know. Uh, you can find the source code of this entire thing in the description, uh, right? So in the standard library, uh, the implementation is just like a rand. Uh, here it is. So here is the random implementation. It's just LCG. And again, I know nothing about random number generators. So if like you see any mistakes, I just copy paste the uh, copy pasted the entire thing from Wikipedia. So. <laughs> Uh, right. Anyway, um, so let me think how we can make the pixels a little bit bigger. That's a good question. How can we do that? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, so, um, I think I need to make a small break. Right, let's make a small break and I'll think about it on the break. Um, all right, let's go ahead and implement a very straightforward thing uh, where we're going to have uh, something like cell width, which is going to be the width of the like a pixel of a single cell. Uh, right, maybe we can call it pixel width, right? So it's called pixel width. So both of the width and height are divisible by 10. So we may say that the pixel width is going to be like 10. Um, maybe we're gonna even make it pixel size because we wanna, want our pixels to be square, right? So it doesn't make any sense to actually make the diff different width and height for the pixel, right? We have to pick the pixel size that is that is divisor for both width and height. Uh, so this is a pixel size and um, now we need to do the following thing. We need to store the amount of rows and columns, right? So this is gonna be pixels uh, rows, actually columns, which is which is basically the width. Uh, so here we take the width, uh, we take the pixel size, and we divide width by the pixel size. Uh, there we go. And then we have something like pixels rows. And that's essentially the width and height that we wanna that we wanna store, right? So uh, that we wanna actually generate, right? So we're gonna be generating. So now we need to allocate the uh, memory for those pixels. Right, so we're going to do pixels, and this is going to be pixels uh, row, uh, pixels row, and then pixels columns, mm, pixels columns, multiplied together. So this is basically the memory. And uh, what we want to do in here, we want to simply generate that stuff. Um, we want to generate that stuff. How are we going to be generating this thing? Oh boy, oh boy, where is my soy? So uh, I think we can generate that um, separately from from saving to file, right? So because we first want to generate the pixels and then save them to file. So I can introduce a procedure called generate pixels, right? Uh, it's not going to accept any parameters. So it's going to be it's going to just like, you know, go ahead and generate the pixels. Uh, so we're going to organize the loop, uh, starting from zero, then we're going to duplicate it, uh, pixels, uh, rows, pixels, columns, uh, multiplied together, and while less, we're going to be keep incrementing this entire stuff. And what we want to do in here is 
basically the generation, I would say. Um, basically the generation. So let's do a random number. Then uh, sum the bytes, right? We're going to sum the bytes, which means that we need to put uh, the bytes, uh, this function, above uh, generating the pixels. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So somewhere here. So here we're summing up the, the bytes. So here's the piece of memory. Uh, summing up the bytes and then we're going to take a single byte out of that. So here is the byte that we need to save to the current pixel. Right, that's what we need to do. So on the stack right now we have the current index, right, and then the random value. So what I want to do in this particular case, I suppose, is over, which will copy the index in here. Then I want to add uh, the pixels. Right, something like this. So it's going to be pixels uh, plus index. And essentially, uh, oh boy, oh boy, I need to, I need to save value to all of the three components of the pixel. Well, I don't have to because I can split this stuff when I'm saving it. Okay, so the only thing I need to do in here is just like uh, save that uh, that value into that. Uh, place right and that's it so I, I guess that's gonna be it there we go so we're generating the pixels and then i only need to drop the index that we were maintaining in the loop uh all right so here before opening the file i think i want to try to generate the pixels right so we're generating the pixels then we open the file then we prepare everything and in here what we're doing is essentially uh, essentially, it's just saving everything. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So let me think. Let me think. Let me think. So first of all, uh, we need to figure out. We need to figure out at which cell we're uh, which cell we're currently in. So we're iterating each new usual pixel of the canvas. But within that, uh, that pixel may belong to one of the cells, and we need to figure that out. So here's the thing, we need to maintain both current row and current column, right? So that means we can't use this uh, like a single loop anymore. We have to make a nested loop. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. And by the way, so I think I need to move uh, 69's rand to uh, generate pixels, right? I need to move it somewhere here, right? There we go. Uh, let me go ahead and remove this entire stuff. I didn't think it's like needed. Uh, we're going to start from scratch. So let me duplicate that and check that it's less than height. We're going to be iterating like row wise, row by row. Uh, one plus here. I can just drop this entire thing. And then within that thing, we're going to be iterating, iterating the columns, right? So this is going to be width two and right. So this is going to be one plus. Cool. Um, here I can also drop this entire thing. Mm -hmm. So here I have the row and then the column. So this is what we have on the stack. Um, so what I need to do now, I need to figure out what cell are we currently in, right? So essentially, first thing I can, uh, I can do, I can just to dupe both of these things, right? And now I have these two stuff, um, right? Then I need to basically take the column, all right, and divide by the pixel size. Uh, pixel, pixel size, right? So this is divided by size. Uh, then I can swap this entire thing, right? So that will give me a row in here. Uh, and I can divide it by size yet again. So this is going to be divided by size yet again. Uh, all right. So then I need to figure out the index within the pixels array, right? Within the pixels array. Uh, so what I need to push in here, I need to push the pixels, uh, pixels column, which is the size of the row, right? So essentially I uh, I'm, I'm going to multiply this entire stuff by uh, the pixels columns, right? Uh, 
And then I can just add everything together, right? I add everything together and that kind of gives me the index within the pixels array, right? So that turns into an index, uh, this entire stuff. So what we were doing here, we were basically calculating an index within the pixels array based on a row and column of the pixels. Uh, all right, so then I can take the pixels, right? Uh, pixels, I can take the pixels and I can just add them, right? I'm adding the pixels and there we go. I point at a pixel, at a value, which I can finally read in here, right? I'm reading this entire uh, value and that's basically what I have. So now I need to like duplicate this value three times, right? As we did initially. So now I have uh, like, well, let's replace it with the value. So I have three values in here. Uh, so, and then, um, so this is a pixel. This is a little bit confusing. This is a little bit confusing. Let's, let's call it bytes or something. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So then I do bytes and I save it into the bytes. So this is the first value. Then I save that into bytes one plus, and then the second one, there we go. So, and after that, I need to save those bytes into the file. So I'm going to put three bytes and then the file descriptor FD. Uh, 64 F puts, there we go. That's how we can do that, hopefully. Um, so, and that will make the pixels of the final thumbnail a little bit bigger, right? So they're gonna be like a less, less grainy or something. Okay, so we have unsupported keyword in the compile time. Ah, oh, I do remember this shit, fuck. I do remember. Yeah, you can't do that, you can't just do that. Unfortunately, so you have to use the diff mode, uh, which returns, I think the first thing it returns, it returns the um, the division and only then modular. So let me actually, uh, let me actually check. I think I'm going to just go ahead and take the procedure slash uh, and yeah, it's a div drop, All right? So diff mode drop and this one is also div mode drop. So it's basically division, <laughs> right? Okay, so it's doing something. It is in fact doing something and then if we take a look at this entire thing like it's actually more uh, like bigger the pixels are bigger uh, i'm not sure if you can see that properly but uh yeah so maybe we can try to make them even bigger um so to do that i think i need to know um bigger factors of uh, of those values right so what are the factors in here it's kind of difficult to tell, so I suppose it's divisible by 10. That means it's also divisible by 20. But what about uh, this one? Is it divisible by 20? It is, in fact, also divisible by 20. Okay, so that means I can make the pixel size like 20. Uh, right, so that should be, uh, should be possible. Okay, so if I take a look at that thing, so it's uh, even bigger. This is actually, this looks great, actually. This looks cool. I really like that. So um, we can also take 40, right? So if I multiply 2 by 2 by uh, 2 by 5, it's going to be 40. So that means I can make the size of the pixel uh, something like 40, um, even bigger. So, do, 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 do. okay, so there we go. Yeah, that's what actually looks pretty cool. So I can use this as a thumbnail for for that uh, for that VOD where we implemented white noise generator. So yeah, and it's actually pretty cool that I generated this thumbnail using the language that I made myself from scratch. So that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> the fuck? That was relatively easy. Um, okay. It's pretty cool. It's pretty POG. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie. So I guess that's pretty much it for this session, right? Uh, I think I'm gonna use this uh, program as part of this port source code. Uh, essentially, we have a folder with examples. I'm gonna put it into a folder of with, with examples and it's gonna be available for everyone if you yeah, basically go to the to the port uh, source code for for this program, and you can uh, will be able to find it in the examples. Uh, 
All right, so that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one and I see you on the next session. Uh, I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know where, where, whether it's going to be on YouTube or on Twitch. It depends. It all depends. But thank you for watching nonetheless. Really appreciate that. Okay, love you all. Mwah.